Hello everybody, and welcome back to my beginner Let's Play. This is episode two. In the first episode, we dug down, we located the aquifer, we started some basic farming, we got a still built and started brewing alcohol, we built some barrels and started a tavern and a temple, and also got the basic furniture needed to run a fort, as well as ran over the very basics of the management system. Now we're gonna be continuing on that same save and continue to build as prosperous a fortress as possible, well, at least, that we can build with the tools that we have currently. In this episode, we're going to be covering trading, working our way through fall, and entering into winter. We're also going to set up gather zones, and we're going to do our best to get a proper kitchen working, as well as some clothing industry. It's going to be a bit, but hopefully entertaining. We're also going to maybe get a couple bedrooms set up for our first 12 dwarves, as we did get a small migrant wave already. Now that we return, I would like to remind you, this is our tavern. There's a dead spider in there. This is our small temple. Everything is very basic, very unfinished. We have some carpenter shop. We have a we have a carpenter shop, a stoneworker shop, a jeweler's workshop, which we're using for early trade goods, and a craft workshop, as well as a stockpile for drinks, which is very empty right now, unfortunately. Some chairs and a coffer for for mugs. We are making barrels, and we have a signed up jo set up job to brew alcohol. Although it was canceling earlier because we did run out of plump helmets. But that is fine, because they were all planted. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to dig a little further. And we're going to kind of make sure that it looks nice. Because you wouldn't want to make an ugly hallway in your fortress now, would you? Dig a little further. And we are going to begin making an extension to our little crafting zone here. Now, it's currently just a little bit too small. And I, I do like having a larger crafting zone. So we are going to extend the size of all of this. Once this area has been dug out, or if the traders arrive... I will continue talking. As you might notice, I've moved up to the surface. And this is very open. It's a massive threat to the fortress, potentially, if something were to arrive that would want to hurt us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to build a wall. We're going to go into Constructions, and we're going to select Wall Tool. We're going to place two blocks here on either side. And then we're going to place a door on either side of this wall, which we constructed in the last episode. These doors are going to act as an immediate lockable defense in case of utter calamity. Say a were creature shows up or something else that is terrifying. We can simply click on these doors and lock them. Now keep in mind, this won't remove all threats, but at least the immediate early game threats, this will be an immediate fix. As we move out to the surface, you'll see that there are plenty of plants that are worth harvesting out here. And as we did do a gather job earlier using the plant gathering zone, we didn't gather everything. And we're not going to gather any everything. But what we can do is we can order the doors, dwarves to do this automatically using the gather fruit zone. We're going to click and drag and make a small zone here. Not too, too big, but not too, too small. Selecting a decent amount of stuff in the general vicinity. And now we have some options. Once we click accept, we can gather fruit and trees as they ripen. We can gather fruit and vegetables from shrubs. And we can gather fruit in this zone as they fall in the fall. We're just going to leave all of these on. And this is going to give us a steady supply of extra food variety, which the dwarves will very much appreciate. When we go back to where our still is, they will automatically add this to the brew drink from plant jobs. But instead of going into the manager and queuing up a, an order for them, I'm simply going to wait until there is some fruit available in one of our stockpiles from that, and we're going to add a repeating job and prioritize it for brew drink from fruit something else is because we are in fall and we've planted our pigtails and as you can see we have no seeds and there's nothing planted currently they've all been harvested we're going to select the farmer's workshop and we're going to click add new task we're going to process plants and just click repeat this will automatically cancel when they run out and this will quickly spin up our pl our pigtails that we have sitting down on the lower levels so that we can plant more of these as they are harvested in the summer and in the fall. You kind of want to make sure that you have uh, pigtails available for when it is harvesting season. The amount of work that the dwarves need to do to actually harvest and keep these gardens planted is kind of tremendous. So I just want to commend our dwarves. Once these jobs have played out a little bit, we are going to continue. Since it appears that our pigtail job has been canceled, and our pig we do have pigtails, they're just stuck in a barrel... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small stockpile up here just specifically for, for pigtails. I'm going to click accept on the stockpile, and I'm going to remove barrels from it if they didn't already, which they did for me, which is nice. I'm going to then 
go down to food. We're going to go to plants, and we're going to find these pigtails. Right there. We're going to select those. We're going to scroll back down a little bit. We're going to back out of that menu. I'm going to go over here to barrels, and we're just going to hit zero. I just want these to be easily accessible for when we want to make our our cloth, which was something that we're going to try and get going in this episode. So we're going to wait for them to run down underground and bring those pigtails up. Because I do know for a fact we have them, so now we're waiting. We're also going to go down into the basement. We're going to select this stockpile, and we're going to remove pigtails from the plant section of this stockpile. Remember how I said that we're going to start spreading stuff out and putting things in various different places? We're going to go down to food. We're going to go to plants. We're going to type in pig. We're going to remove those from this stockpile. So they should remove them pretty quickly and get them out of that barrel and up to where we want them now. As you can see, there's now a pigtail here. So I can begin processing plants, assuming nothing else comes up. Set this to do immediately. And there, as you can see, they're going to begin harvesting these pigtails. This will give us seeds for these pigtails, as well as uh, giving us access to thread. It's kind of a full-time job for these dwarves to do this. We also have rope reed, which we harvested from the outside, which is another uh, variety of plant that can be made into fabric. Now, like I said, we are going to try and get basic clothing running today. We can zoom back down here and we can see stuff's pretty unfinished. It's going to take a little bit. So whatever happens first, traders or their finished digging, we will continue then. Since things are taking a little bit, I'm going to pause the game. We're going to select one of our miners and make them into a specialty miner. Every now and again, it is a good idea to do this. We're going to select this dwarf right here, Zon. So we're going to go to the units list by hitting U. We're going to go to Zon. And then in Zon's mind, we're going to click on labor. And here we have this funky little button here that says, we'll do available tasks anywhere. No, we don't want that. We simply want you to haul. We want you to mine. And I want you to gather plants when that is available. So they're not doing nothing, but will definitely be more efficient than they currently have been. They're currently processing plants, which is a job that needs doing. Uh, and then they go to gather plants, which, okay, never mind. I changed my mind. You're just simply going to mine and haul. So we're going to wait for them to head back into the fort. Once they jump into this tree and gather some stuff, as you can see, the colors of the leaves are changing, which is beautiful. Now they're going to get back to digging, which is what we currently need. I'm going to head back down into the basement. And it's going to be time to trade pretty soon. We will get a little notification when that happens. Looks like we have a visiting merchant. Well, that's cool. Always love a good guest. As we wait, we're going to check our permissions. I've noticed that we have permissions on our temple for visitors. I'm going to disable that for right now because I don't really want to worry too much about what our guests are doing or saying about us because that could be concerning. And uh, we now have a couple of free jobs showing up. We have this merchant who is socializing in our tavern. Hopefully they're friendly. Potentially part of our faction, even. Let's take a look. We're going to look at groups. They're part of the Place of Years, so they're from a different faction than ours. Their religion is the Fellowship of Rocks. Sounds dwarfy. And they are part of the Wall of Questing, which is a merchant company. Well, that's interesting. Welcome for the time being, but I don't need you drinking all of my alcohol, friend. So instead of welcoming them too much, they can have a couple drinks before they head out. We're also going to select our tavern. And we're going to move that to citizens and long-term residents only. It was good to have a guest, but we do need to focus on more important tasks. If we want our miner here to mine out more specific areas of stone, remember that you can always change the priorities and reselect digging zones, and they will dig out those areas first. Remember how I said that we wanted to get cloth going? Well, we're going to make ourselves a cloth stockpile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a small stockpile zone down here. This probably will get extended pretty shortly, but for right now, we're just going to accept it. And we're going to select cloth. Now we're gonna go back up to our main stockpile that we put everything in earlier, and we are going to remove cloth from it. We're gonna select it, go to custom, go to cloth, and just click none. Now this is going to suddenly start moving everything down into the lower levels, that is in the upper levels. So once this dwarf is finished digging and all of our cloth and thread has been moved down, we will continue. However, it seems that the traders have arrived, so we'll have to do that next. Although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, the supply caravan from the Palace of Years is a welcome sight in their eyes. 
Alight with anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft stores. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow, meaningless death. Very ominous, but exciting, because it means that we get to purchase things. So we're going to scroll up real quick. We're going to pause the game, and we are going to select our stockpile before they get in, because we want to get on this real quickly. You can see some dwarves sleeping. We're going to need to give them proper bedrooms soon, but for now, that is fine. We're going to select Move Goods to from Depot. We're going to go to those cut gems that we worked on earlier. And we're, we are going to select trading. Looks like we've got some pretty valuable ones. These Jasper Opals sitting at a thousand apiece. These Lavender Jades, not so much. They're still pretty though. So they're not going to fetch nothing, but they're not going to fetch the biggest penny. Now we're going to let that play out. Looks like we do have some children in the fort from the most recent, um, from the most recent uh, uh, migrant wave. But I, there's a problem with children now. Uh, they have chores, which can be good and are very efficient and can be very helpful, but also can cause the children to have some problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to standing orders and then we're going to go to chores. Now, these are the list of chores that children do. They haul, they milk animals, and they feed patients and prisoners, which is good. And we do want them doing some of these chores, but I do not want them to do refuse hauling. and I don't want them to, to do burial. Your children are kind of your insurance policy for the future of your fortress. If they get destroyed mentally early on in their life, then they won't do very well later on in life. So we don't want them touching bodies and we want them to stay away from fights, ideally. And also, while we're at it, I'm also going to remove stone hauling from them and I'm also going to remove water hauling because I don't want them running out to the surface in case of fights. So we're going to now wait until the diplomacy button appears here and then we will continue the video. Now, the game is paused. We have diplomacy, and everything has been brought to the trading depot. If we look at the trading depot, there's a number here usually that shows how many items left that need to be brought. We're going to click request broker at depot. As we do know, we have a broker, which we have signed in the last episode. So we are now going to click on diplomacy because our broker is currently speaking with our outpost liaison. The outpost liaison is the representative from the mountain home who is here to speak with you on behalf of the mountain home and ask what you would like to trade. The expedition leader says, I am, uh, Colette meets with the outpost liaison, Aiden Teshenkal. And Aiden says, I am your liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. There is much to share. Information has been added to the civilization and world info. And then they ask what we would like to request for the next season. Now, you can request as many or as few items as you wish. But keep in mind, the items that you do request will have an inflated price. So early on, it's, for me, personally, a good idea to take a real quick look at the pets, see what's available, because this is going to be very important for future animals in your fortress. Looks like we can get guinea hens, alpacas, some doe rabbits, turkeys, and various other animals. Nothing that we immediately need, but it's good to take note of that. Now, I think we're just going to simply go over to anvils and request iron anvils. We're also going to go to metal bars and request iron bars. After that... It's a good idea to request plant cloth, some silk, just cave spider silk because it's cheaper than giant cave spider silk, and also at least one kind of leather. As for why, I'll explain that later. But for right now, make sure that you just request all of the major clothing type, all of the major cloth types. If I can find leather on this list or tanned hides, uh, that would be an improvement. Leather is right up at the top. Doesn't matter what kind of leather we request. But let's just say dingo leather. Now we're going to click done. So we've requested dingo leather. We've requested pigtail cloth. We've requested cave spider silk. We've requested iron bars and iron anvils. So now they say they have a need for seeds. Well, that's going to be easy. As, and it is expected. And you are, if you are able to provide some, the caravan will offer 194%. This export only applies to trades next year with merchants not with merchants currently present. Well, that's helpful for us. We're now going to wait for our broker to arrive at the depot. They've now arrived because the trading button has gone white. We're going to click on that. And now we get to trade. So down here, you can see the value and their profit. They're going to want their profit to be green. I have no idea what the percentage is. It used to be 30%, but uh, the numbers have clearly changed there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select one, two, three, four gems. 
Now we're going to decide what we're going to grab. On your first caravan, it is wise to grab at least one metal bar. It is wise to grab a couple of ropes, if possible. And, ooh, they have some musical instruments. I'm going to buy one of those just for fun. And as we scroll down, we can see various other things. We could get a toy for the kids. Let's buy a copper toy boat. I'm sure that they will appreciate that. They have horses and turkeys available. They have some barrels with various things in them. They have some buckets. They have a bronze battle axe, an iron short sword. All of these things could be useful. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the bags. Now, bags are something that use up a little bit of resources early, but are really good for storing seeds, as we know. So I'm going to buy a couple of these bags. We're going to compensate for this uh, cost here with these extra gems that we have, and we're going to buy the empty bags. All of the empty, except for that last one. That cave spider silk bag is a little too fancy for us. The symbols here uh, imply that there are some sort of images or engravings on them, probably stitched on. The little number at the end is the quality level. I recommend looking these up on the wiki. As you can see, we have leather. So we're also going to buy one bin of leather. Now, as you can see, they're not very happy with this profit level. If I try to trade right now, they might actually get mad at me and leave. So we don't want to do that. But what we do want to do is make them happy with the trading. So I'm going to offer them some more of these gems until the price goes green. Assuming I even have enough gems to make the price go green. Looks like I don't. So instead, we're going to move the, remove this leather from here and add a couple pieces in manually. Okay, until it goes, until it goes yellow. All right, perfect. Now we can trade. So the reason I'm buying leather is because... When you get your first strange mood, it's possible they could want any piece of cloth or any piece of leather. And you want to have an excess amount and an extra of each. Same with the metal bar. We don't want to suddenly be throwing together uh, a metalworking industry purely to satisfy the first mood if we're not ready to set that up yet. And then that's going to throw off our production chains for the rest of the game. So just make sure you get a little bit of everything in the early game. We're going to click trade. They really, really, really want a massive profit on that first one, which actually makes things a little bit difficult. <gasps> Look up here. We have an upset dwarf. Let's figure out what they need real quick. Pause the game. We're going to open up the unit list by pressing U. We're going to take a look. It's a kid. Well, this kid's not super happy, so what can we do to rectify this? Let's jump down to the child and take a peek. They're grouchy upon being caught in the rain. That's fair. And they're grouchy upon being caught in the rain. If we go to thoughts, go to memories... Dwelling upon being caught in the rain. Well, phooey. That's not good. Well, something that we can do is we can go down to the tavern and we can make something for the kids, you know? Dwarven children, they do... Whoop. We have a goblin dancer hanging out in our tavern. Would you look at that? It's kind of awesome. Although, I thought I removed guests. Well, clearly not enough. You're not a citizen, nor a long-term resident. I mean, okay. Fair enough, then. We're going to make a small stockpile here of two spots. We're going to accept it. And we're going to go into custom. We're going to go to finished goods. Then we are going to look up toy. Now, we're going to select that and then add in all of the materials. So, yes. Oops. We're going to re re remove toy from the search bar so that uh, it doesn't screw up our searches now. We're going to go yes, 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 yes. Yes, insert old meme here of guy going yes. Now, we can have toys made out of any materials stored in this stockpile. They're going to put that toy down there, and the kids can go play with it. We'll make some more later. We're also going to put doors into both our tavern and our temple. The dwarves will appreciate that, I'm sure. They like the privacy. Now, as you can see, this is getting dug out. We are going to make that loom that I spoke about earlier. There are two workshops we're going to build now. We're going to build a loom, and we're going to build a, clothes work a clothing workshop. So we're going to do a loom, and right next to it, we're going to do a clothing workshop. Now, this is a very compact uh, kind of crafting zone, but that's okay. The loom is going to automatically take all thread in the fortress and spin it into cloth, and that's going to begin populating this stockpile down here. We're also going to move back up to the upper layer, and we're going to go to the farmer's workshop again. And regardless of whether or not it's available, we are going to queue up process plants. Hopefully, there are plants available to be processed, but apparently we're not so lucky. So instead, we will then move back down. Also, as you can see over here, this stockpile is filling up with those bags that we purchased, which is very good, as well as those seeds that are now sitting in these stockpiles. They're being moved into the barrels. And uh, down here, you can also see we have some alcohol that has been brewed. That's going to need to be moved down into the tavern area. Let's go find out why it's not sitting in this tavern. 
We have barrels allowed. Okay. We got plants. Okay. Drink from plants. Everything is here. That's interesting. I'm not actually totally sure why. Odd. I really wish that they would put those in that stockpile. Maybe they're just a little bit too busy doing other things, which is possible. As you can see now, our cloth is getting started, which is good. I'm going to queue up a couple extra bags. Not too many. We're going to go into the cloth menu. And we're going to just type in bag. Just queue up three or four. We're actually going to do this from the work, uh, uh, the work menu. Type in bag, cloth bag. Ten, eh, that's a bit much. Instead, we're going to lower this number down to five. Now, as you can see, some more migrants have arrived. We're going to need to start working on bedrooms. So I think that is the next job that we're going to do here. I'm going to queue up a couple of bedrooms, and once I'm done queuing them up, I will continue talking. Now I've queued up a few bedrooms, and something I would like to note, on this little hallway here, as you can see, we've got this kind of diagonal pattern. Now, dwarves can move diagonally, so we can actually put a door right here and a bed right here, and the dwarves will use that as a bedroom, no issue. Something that's just worth noting. We're also going to get a lower priority job rolling on our tavern. We're going to start smoothing these walls. Now, the reasons I've left a little bit of space down here is I'm going to make this into our full tavern a little bit later and extend it down into the lower area. Dwarves do like a higher value tavern. It makes them happy. And remember, we did buy a musical instrument a little bit earlier. So I'm going to select my tavern. We're going to see if they put it into the tavern. Right here, stored musical instruments. We now have a musical instrument in our tavern assigned, which is very good. That is definitely an optimal option for down here. Now, we are going to... Move into furniture once again, and we're going to grab beds. We're just going to start placing beds. It doesn't matter which one for me. Uh-oh. Never mind. We don't have enough beds. All right. I'm going to queue up some more beds at the carpenter's workshop. We're just going to do a job assignment from right here. Um, we are going to go to work orders. We're going to type in bed. We're going to queue up 10. We do have 17 dwarves. So instead of queuing up 10, we're going to queue up 20, which should be a good number for our current dwarven count. As you can see... This stockpile is starting to fill up with more cloth. We're going to fly back up to the surface layer, and we're going to check, see if we're processing plants, and queue up that job once again, just to keep the pigtails farms going. There is one pigtail plant that was planted this season that, that is available to be used, which is good, and our little pigtail farm here is filling up as well. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down to the uh, stoneworkers shop, and we're going to queue up two different work orders using the manager. We're going to queue up coffer. Remember, we made these before. These are boxes for the bedrooms. We're going to queue up 20. And we're also going to queue up cabinets. Now, cabinets and coffers are important for bedrooms. They're kind of what I would consider the minimum nice bedroom. Coffers are where dwarves store their, their, their items, such as crowns, rings, hats, or cr crowns, rings, and metal caps, and things that they acquire over their working careers. And... Cabinets are where they store their clothing. You can get fancy and also use things like armor stands and weapon racks and tables. Maybe you want to give all the dwarves their own office and go super, super blingy. But this is kind of what I consider to be the basic mandatory bedroom. Our manager still goes and assigns them, and the dwarves are setting everything else up. We can check over here, and as you can see, we do have some beds popping up now. Two, and three, and four, and five. It's nice and fast. Perfect dwarf. So while that dwarf is doing that, we're going to begin assigning these bedrooms. We're going to place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we went faster, 16, 17. We're going to queue up two more bedrooms along this walkway up here, which they will get to. They just won't be the first ones. And then what we're going to do is we are going to place those last few beds 15, 16, and then eventually 17. Now, you don't need the exact number of beds for your dwarves because some of them are inevitably going to be couples and are going to be married while we place these doors in. And those dwarves are going to share bedrooms. We also need some more doors, it appears. So maybe it's time for us to make a second stoneworker shop as we do have 17 dwarves currently. So we're going to go into stoneworker and make another stoneworker shop. And I do need a place for it kind of getting a little messy here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put post this second stoneworker shop down in this hallway because they will just use the closest stone. So if we place it down where there's a big surplus of stone, they don't need to walk as far and they will be able to start clearing this area out of these boulders. I've got to say, I love the color of jet. It's such a nice color. Once 
the stoneworker's shop is ready, and we have all of these set up with doors, I will continue talking. Something that we should do right away, though, because we do have these beds set up, is we're going to click on the zone menu, we're going to click on bedroom, and we're going to go to multi. Now, multi is going to automatically designate some of these bedrooms with the doors on them. As you can see, I can select this whole area, and it will automatically detect the bedrooms that have doors on them. I'm going to click done. And now, we do have some bedrooms assigned, which dwarves will immediately go and claim when they need to sleep, which is very useful. And now that the new stoneworker shop is ready, we're going to go here, we're going to go to work orders, and we're going to add a new task, and we're going to add door. We're going to click yes, go here, and we're going to say 25 doors, because that's about approximately how many we will need. Our dwarves are still working on cloth, and that's a good sign. We got more pigtail cloth coming. So jump back up to the surface and check that little pigtail stockpile. Seems to have emptied out, which is good. And we do have thread in here still. Awesome. Now that we check our pigtail uh, pile, you can see it's full of seeds, which means we're going to have a really good harvest this year. Looking forward to winter so that we can make more cloth. We can fly back down and actually check our stocks and take a real quick look. How are we doing on cloth? As we go down, we've got cloth. Look at all of this cloth that we have, most of the stuff we've traded for. That is all of our pigtail cloth. We've barely bought any of that stuff. We haven't bought any of that stuff, actually. So this is our cloth supplies, which is looking swanky, frankly. Let's move over here, take a look at those doors. Those doors are getting going, which is a good sign. We're going to kind of let these dwarves play out and finish up some of these tasks. And once they're done, we'll continue with the video. So while I was gone, I took the liberty to place all of these beds and doors. We're just going to assign those real quick, and that should keep us covered for a little bit. We do have 17 dwarves, and now we have more than 17 bedrooms, so we are certainly good for a little while. Once again, we have our industry, we have our temple, we have our tavern, we have our beds. And now something that I need to set up that is very important is access to water. So... As we know, there is an aquifer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can get above that aquifer. We're going to dig a ramp going up. Now, what's the difference between a ramp and a stair? Ramps go diagonally and stairs go vertically. I'm going to dig a ramp right here and see what we run into. We've dug the ramp now. It's moved up. Perfect. So we do know that this is all an aquifer layer, which isn't a bad thing but we do need to have access to it cleanly. So I'm going to fill this hole back in and we're gonna use the stairs this time. So I'm going to click this and we are going to place a wall right there. They're gonna use whatever's closest by, whatever boulder, and that is fine. We're now gonna move one tile up and as you can see, there's this open spot here now, which is going to begin filling with water. We're going to dig over until we hit the aquifer. See what we collide with. We're going to be building a well. We're going to need to build some stuff still to make the well properly, but that is fine. For right now, we're just going to try and get into this aquifer. What we're going to do is we are going to do some kind of trickery here, which should be pretty efficient. We're going to dig out the sides here. We're going to dig out a little square. As you can see, we are encountering more aquifer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up by one more layer. I'm going to dig up. I'm going to figure out where this is right here, our square. We're going to kind of select that. I'm going to dig up and over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of trickery. I'm going to remove this aquifer from this layer. This is going to be a little tricky, but if you follow me, aquifers come from the ceiling and the walls. So what we want to do is we want to remove the ceiling and the walls that contain aquifer. This is going to get a little wet for a few seconds here, but if we complete everything correctly, we will have clean space to build underneath. We're going to remove this, take it all out, and then we are going to dig into here. And as you can see, that's the edge of the aquifer. So this hair area right here is going to be dripping water in a few seconds. We're now going to channel down, which is going to remove the ceiling from this layer. Wait for the dwarves to kind of run over. And this is going to remove the ceiling that contains the aquifer. We're then going to fill this wall in the second we are done with this. So we're completing it. We're going to fill this in. This is going to build a new ceiling on this lower layer. 
which, while it might be a little bit confusing, is very useful when building a well. So we're going to fill this in, and then we're going to repeat. We are going to channel down, and then we're going to fill in the ceiling. We're going to channel down, and then we're going to fill in the ceiling. We're going to channel down, and we're going to fill in the ceiling. So we're, once again, we are removing the ceiling that contains water. Now, as you can see down here, this area is beginning to fill up. So we're going to have to do this quickly. We're going to pause the game. We're going to fill in the ceiling. We're going to let the dwarves run up here and complete it. Come on, dwarves, get her done. They're grabbing everything that they need. Please don't drown. That would be awkward. Then we are going to channel down once again and fill it in. We're also going to dig through here on this side, underneath, as they complete this upper layer, which is going to remove it. Perfect. And now we do have these ramps going up, which we don't need to worry about too, too much. We are going to, because we have these ceiling bits up here underneath this square, we're going to quickly finish filling this in. And then we're going to do some real tricky things real quick. So if you follow, we're going to dig all the way around on this side, on this upper layer, and we're going to fill this in with walls. So now we've stopped water from coming from the ceiling, and we're also stopping water coming from the walls. Once they get over to the corner here, some people have left in the comments section that you can smooth walls, to remove aquifers, which used to be true in their defense. But that is a bug from quite some time ago that has since been fixed. Oops. <laughs> if we hit M, you can see the areas where water is going to be coming from, as well as where water would have been coming from, which would have been on this ceiling. We're going to remove all of this. And just for my own sanity's sake, we're also going to place a row of blocks right here. Now we're going to go up to the top, and we're going to fill in the last of this area. This is some tricky techniques. So let me know in the comments section if you were able to follow, because I kind of want to be able to show you that aquifers are not only useful, but incredibly powerful tools for long-term fortress survival. We are running a little low on meat, so we might have to do some animal husbandry soon. Since I don't want to stare at this spot, we're just going to fill it all in. This water down here on the ground will dry up sooner rather than later. We're going to fill in the last piece of this wall. And as you can see, we do have a dusting of mud there, but that's okay. On this lower layer now, we're going to build our well right here. Which will give us a supply of clean water. And now fortunately, uh, because we did settle somewhere where there was uh, salty water up on the surface, apparently, which is interesting considering it is near or in a creek, uh, we do need access to a well. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear this out. Then we're actually going to jump down into the well initially. Hopefully cats don't jump into it. Oh, actually, we can't because... It decided to be all sneaky. Uh, well, then we're going to dig a second one right here, and hopefully it gives us access to... A oh, never mind. We do have a ramp in there. I thought it dug out the ramp as well. All right, so let's remove this. We're going to go down into here, and we're just simply going to cut out a little bit more space here. And uh, we're going to fill in this corner, because apparently we took out that corner as well. Well, I mean, we kind of did that while we were digging, which instead of like, you know, doing what we wanted to do, we're just going to cause leaking. So we're going to plug that real quick. And as you can see, uh, this is going to begin filling with water, and that's going to provide our well. We're also going to need to plug this corner as well. So that's going to give us four tiles to work into our well. Uh, actually, you know what? I kind of want to remove that ramp as well. So let's actually cancel this, remove this spot, and then we're going to dig up this last ramp down here. This last ramp, and we can put a block in there, which is going to be built out of wood, actually, because I used closest material. So I'm going to remove it once again, and we're going to use a rock instead, just so things look uniform, you know? You don't want to be using wood in too many spots. That's very elfy. So now we've got that rock, that replaced with rock. And then if we look at the mining tool again, we've got this whole wall here that is full of aquifer, which is going to begin filling up this little spot for our well. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to this upper layer. Uh-oh. We do have some more mud coming in. Hopefully that slows down. Fortunately, it will leak into here. Now, hopefully we've set this up all correctly. This should work. Uh-oh. Dried up. Well, that's not a good sign. Maybe I removed too much. So, if we're worried about removing too much from this aquifer, we can dig into the sidewall here. And we can dig out a little more of this. There we go. Look at that. That's what we want to see. 
water filling up in our light aquifer well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. The more exposed rock you have in your light aquifer well, the more space that you will have for it. Now, I just want to quickly move these boulders out of here. So I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to do that. I'm going to make a garbage dump right here, but using the zone tool. So zone, garbage dump, and then we're going to go to here, click on this job, and we're going to designate these rocks to be dumped. We're going to run over here and quickly pick them up and dump them right there. Then we're going to remove the garbage dump zone because I don't want to forget about it. They will forbid them when they put them there, however, so keep that in mind. Come on, dwarves. And then here, we're going to... Eh, I'm kind of tempted to channel this down one layer, actually, but I will simply now hit Z, and we're going to remove this stockpile, and we are going to claim... Oops. And we are going to claim those two boulders. We're going to use them to fill this in. We're going to fill that in real quick. Hopefully they don't get themselves stuck in there. And then we are going to make a mechanics workshop. This is something that we are going to need for this well. It will take a little bit to fill, but it'll fill eventually. Hopefully it fills. If it doesn't, then I'm going to look very silly in this video, and that would be suboptimal. But, you know, find me a streamer and YouTuber who doesn't look silly. I'm going to get that built and hope that this continues to fill. Otherwise, it's just maybe the lightest aquifer that I've ever seen, <laughs> which is also possible. I've seen Stranger Things. Even the show wasn't that good. All right, we're going to move up here. And now that we've made that little room for our well, we're going to hope that it fills, and we're going to select rock mechanisms. We're going to make two. Rock mechanisms are what we're going to use to make this well. As it hopefully continues to fill from here and various other spots. It should fill straight, straight in from the walls. We're going to move up to the upper layer. And we are going to build a well as soon as they've completed that mechanism. So once they've made that mechanism, we're going to move up to the upper layer and we are going to go to uh, mechanisms and fluids and go to well. And we're going to place it over this hole. It doesn't matter how high up it is, they will place it regardless. As you can see, there's a second tile. Perfect. It's just a very light aquifer. Hopefully, hopefully it is heavy enough that it will fill. It looks like it's filling. Slowly but surely filling. Perfect. Okay, now move on to the... Whoop. Did they cancel the uh, did they cancel the well? I'm gonna try this again. Uh, uh, select material after placement. Oh, I see. We have no access to blocks. Right. Well, now we have a task. We're gonna go over to our stone workers workshop. We're gonna work orders and we're gonna go to rock. Well, we don't need to type in blocks, but we're gonna type in blocks. We're gonna just make 10 blocks out of rocks that can be found in the zone. That's going to be used as part of our well. Once we have that done, the dwarves will uh rush up here and construct our well. Just need to wait for a dwarf to come over here and place it. I will return once that is complete. All right, so the block has now been constructed, so we are going to go into our well. Once again, we are going to go to fluids and mechanisms, and we are going to select a well. We're going to click shale blocks, spore buckets, and a rope, and a mechanism. All of these pieces combined are going to create us our well. Looks like we did kind of leave a spot here. That's fine. Not exactly what I'd hoped for. It is filling... But very slowly. I may have actually cut out too much of it. If it doesn't get completed by the end of next video and filled up, we'll go in here and we'll dig out a little more, dig down another layer, and get it done. Actually, you know what? Why don't we do that right now? I'm going to dig through here. Oopsies. We're going to select this stone. We're going to dig through this spot. And we're going to just channel this down one layer because I'm assuming there's more aquifer underneath it based on how much we've seen so far. We're going to go down here and we're going to channel down one layer. All the way around. Wells don't need to be one layer above. They can go rather far. And this will hopefully speed up this whole process. Go all the way around. And we could haul these boulders out of here, but it looks like they're already doing that for us. As you can see, now there's more layers of aquifer available. And so instead of having just the one layer of blocks, we have the two for the same amount of space, which will speed up this whole process. We do need to get... Oops, pauses. Well, actually, let's. Why, why not even go even further down? Just continue where we started. So it'll fill up this bottom layer first, move up to the medium layer, and then follow it, followed finally by the top layer. Eventually, this will all fill up with water, and then we'll have a lovely little well. Let's actually check down here. Looks like we have water around the edges too, which is even better. We're now going to move up, and we are going to plug the hole, maybe with the boulder down in the base, down in the base of the well. Let's see, we'll use that slade that's close by. 
So they will dash in to the water real quick, pop back out, and get it sealed. Look at this nice little rainbow wall we have. Quite lovely. So with that, I think that concludes our second episode of the tutorial Let's Play. In the next episode, we'll continue tackling more stuff. Just as a recap, we worked our way with the aquifer, we cut the ceiling out of it so that it wouldn't spill, filled it up with a well, and made a multi-layer deep well that's going to slowly fill up naturally with clean water that we can get from. We also smoothed things up, made bedrooms, and got our stoneworking industry up and running. Also, look at all of that cloth. We'll have to make some socks next episode. Thank you very much for watching this. If you are, if you are enjoying this series, give this channel a follow. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I had to restart it due to just not being happy with the quality of the initial run. So, this hopefully this second season is just as useful, and maybe we can teach you even more fun tips and tricks. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.